Can you hear me, Robert? Check, check, one, two, check, check, one, two. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, it's noticeable. It's noticeable? Yeah, the background noise, noise is noticeable. All right. Sucks. That's a lot better. Yeah, that's tons better. Ah, oh, shoot. I don't have a um, power outlet close to me, unfortunately. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Playing on the edge. Okay, I'm going to jump on this other. Yeah. See you later, Robert. Have a good one. Thanks, Chris. Hey, what's up, Sam? Am I muted? No. You aren't anymore. Okay. Sorry, I'm having to work from Soho House today, so I'm kind of sneaking on the side. What are you doing at Soho House? Working. Oh, is that where you have a job? No, no, no. Um, it's kind of like a social club for creatives. You've never it's been to awesome. Soho House? You need to come to Nashville. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'll send you I'll send you a link. It's like a hotel workspace, gym, um pool, like the whole thing. Oh, we need that here. <laughs> Or y'all can just come here. Yeah, yeah, but I want one in my town. <laughs> Do you not have one in Vancouver? I'm going to oh. look on the list. I don't think okay. so. Let me see here. I'm sorry if there's some background noise. I, I'm dealing with a, a sitch. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Soho, Canada. Wouldn't that be so sweet if it just ended up being me and you? Oh my gosh. Yes. And catch up all at oh, the same time. There you go. No. Nope. Hey guys. I had just said to Sam, I was like, look at this, Sam. It looks like it might end up being just me and you. <laughs> I need all the help. I'm I'm sorry. I I have to admit the other day I was so nervous. Well, with guys like Lee in the room, it's natural that you're nervous. I'm like, yeah. let me just well, my start are. over my own words. I don't know what I do for a living. I don't know why I'm here. I'm intimidated. <laughs> um. Well, considering a lot of people just joined in the last 30 seconds, I'm going to wait 30 more seconds and jump right back in. Kevin, nice to see you, man. You did such a great job last week at the um, live events and stuff. It was so cool to see your work, and, man, that really worked out. <laughs> yeah, thanks again for convincing me to come into the city. It was it was a really good uh, really good night. My pleasure, man. It was, it was awesome. And uh, Lee, you really captivated my buddy Robert Michael Murray's imagination. He went down your LinkedIn rabbit hole and uh, uh, called me one day. He's like, do you know who this guy Lee really is? And really and then started to tell me a thing or two. Former oh, okay. of Manchester United. Yeah, yeah, that's for, for my sins. For my sins. And NBD. All right, well, we haven't anyone joined us. Well, mistakes. Yeah. Okay. So one second. Chris, you can go to Toronto. There's one in Toronto. Um, Sam was just educating me about the Soho Club in Nashville, where she's working out of today. Samantha, where are you? I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, okay. 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 And where are you, Lee? In uh, I'm in New York, in Brooklyn. Oh, uh, I just York has a thing to my notion on the chat there. You guys are welcome to grab that and follow along. I'm also going to screen share it.
I'm not the most deft. Do you uh, put it in chat? I think so. Did anyone else not see it? Can anyone confirm they see my link in the I can't see. I Creative toolbox. Is there a sign up code here? Oh, I see. Hold on one sec. You shouldn't have to. I might just need to change one setting. Okay. I got him with my Notion account. Yeah, so. I guess Lee's expressing that he maybe doesn't have one, but uh, he should be able to see it anyway, I think. Um, Lee, one of my actual suggestions today is going to be to to use Notion. And so even if you may want to grab an account if it's easy enough but um here's the link again okay and i just made a small change so maybe now it'll pop up in your browser okay one sec we also see oh my god this is amazing cut and paste the uh i don't know how much content it'll let me post here but i'll just see if i can't drop yeah it. I, I i got it now thank you Chris. okay Okay, so let me get the screen share going. I'm disorienting myself. The other day when I did this with you guys, I set up uh, two extra monitors and I had my laptop monitor going and I had like all my different palettes and things on um, one screen and all your smiling faces on another. But today I'm having to, to bounce around the old fashioned way. Close. What do you guys see? Did my screen just pop up? Yes. And is it on my Notion? Yes. Great. All right. Too cool. All right, so I just want to do a tools rip around with you guys. Let me make sure. Uh, Sam, you're the one responding the quickest to me, so let me know. Did are we? OK, yeah, you're in my Notion. Great. Awesome. Yeah, I can see so, yours. I can see mine, but your screen is on. Okay. So um, we're going to be generating tons of content going forward with all these cool new AI tools. And um, I was talking this morning, and I believe the number one reason that I am so creative and productive these days is because I capture all the value of all the conversations I have with AI in my notion. And it's actually instilled a new value in my whole life around the idea of compounding effort. And so um, every time I have a chat with AI, whatever I glean from it or make in it, I end up bringing into Notion, which I think of as my personal wiki or my personal knowledge base. And block by block, page by page, over time, um, you will also have a searchable, indexable, AIable, um, creative knowledge base. So I just wanted to give you a quick tour of kind of some of the things I have going on. Um, these are my favorite sections over here where these are the things I use on the daily basis. I have landing pages here for each of my projects. And I use Notion both as an internal tool to have, where I have private information, but I also use it as an external tool. Sometimes instead of building web pages or adding to my web page, I just add a new policy or procedure to my Notion and send the Notion link around. And so that's what I'm starting to do here. I've got overviews of my whole company, of all the different events that I'm throwing this year. I've got my art projects that I'm working on with collaborated creators outlined in here and I put all my reports that I write in here. This is like AI generated images up with some AI generated text. And so, and it actually has AI built into it as well. Let me show you how that works real quick. Um, make a list of places to eat. Chris, did you say you put all these in folders? Excuse me? Did you say you put all of these in folders on the side of Notion? Oh, I'll show you what I did. I actually just... Okay, um, sorry. No, it's cool. This little star button up here uh, corresponds with these favorites over here. So this page we're on right now is this Kelwin Crowfeather page. And if I it. unstar it, it will... Oops, hold on it'll um, remove it from the sidebar there. So they're not so much folders as they are just pages. Got it, thanks. So, so you can see here, I actually used AI right inside Notion. I just typed 
make a list of great places in Vancouver to eat, and then I hit the Ask AI button, and and it uh, um, and then it's like great add phone numbers. And it adds it straight in there to your notion. So you can actually, for simple AI tasks, um, I don't even leave Notion to go to GPT. I just do it straight up right in here. And um, I've built my social media calendar in here as well. So this is like not just text pages, this is whole like uh, database of my socials. And so I use this as uh, where I stage and draft and approve all my posts with my assistant. Um, so highly recommend whatever you choose, choose some sort of personal knowledge management system. I recommend this one. Um, it's been so cool to get to know this tool. You know, like good relationships or good software, it gradually reveals its uh, power over time. And so uh, even just this morning, I watched a handful of tutorials on um, keyboard shortcuts and other tips and tricks about how to access stuff because I'm, I'm spending hours a day in this tool and it's awesome. It's how I share my ideas with the world. Okay, let us go back. Canva is the next one I got. I recently had a, a Canva divorce. I um, left the job that I've been working for years um, for the future in review, and I have been using their Canva. Um, and so I had to start my own. And so I've started that recently, and that was kind of cool because I got to know the process from the ground up. Are you guys looking at my browser window, a red browser window? Yes. Great. Um, I mentioned, I think, Canva to Kevin the other day, and he had a cow, and it was understandable because, you know, we all are very embedded under the Adobe tools. But um, this thing is a really cool toolkit for uh, modern web and AI working, so especially for distributed teams and stuff. So once I AI generated a bunch of my visual assets for Future Proof Creatives, Motley Crew Media, and the Vancouver AI meetups, I brought those logos and palettes that I generated by AI into here so that they can be preloaded as assets into all my different projects. So those logos and my colors, and they're actually like selectable colors inside the system. And so if I start, and I haven't built it out all the way. You see here, I haven't set all my custom fonts and stuff, but I did upload a bunch of photos and graphics that I generated with AI in here as well. So uh, again, it's a way to manage AI assets and build new AI projects, but it's also um, got a few low hanging fruit AI tools in it that are pretty cool. Um, I'll show you some of those now. Here's my little brand kit that I was just showing you. And um, I'm just going to find something that will work. Oh, let's try this one. OK, so the things I want to show you here, if I click this Edit Photo button, oops. This little Magic Studio thing is what they call their AI stuff. So these are the few tools that they have that use AI. This one, because it's an illustration, the background remover didn't work. I'll, I'll show you another one there in a second. But um, because there's no background, it's like flat art. <laughs> but we can erase some stuff, I'm sure. Let's say we don't like this guy's head. La Cabeza. I don't know what it's going to replace it with, because this is a weird choice that I made. Uh, that wasn't too magical, but that's fine. Let's go back. This magic expander is pretty cool. It will AI generate the rest of the image that doesn't exist yet. It can do this with photos and stuff too. Maybe that would be a good example. I didn't want it to be of me, but that doesn't matter, I guess. 
Uh, while we were away there, there you go. I'll just undo it and then redo it. You can see the areas where the AI started to uh, interpolate things. It got a little wacky. Um, but let's just try this one of me instead. And we'll go Magic Expander again. Oops. That should add the top of my head and a little bit more beard. I'm gonna hang out while we do this one so I don't miss it. If anyone has any comments or interjections while we wait, they're welcome. Hey, there you go, that's a pretty good example. So we just AI'd my head together in uh, Canva. Oops, undo. And you know, redo. And so that's not like I didn't, you know, change the crop area. We actually added new image that didn't exist. And I'll show you the background remover since we got it in here. It's using AI to do this. And then we can go something like this. And we'll go, uh, where's the little text? Describe my edit, say coon skin cap. Add coon skin cap. Oh, it, that has a racist word in it. <laughs> Add raccoon hat. And so that's pretty terrible. But actually, you kind of get the point. That one's actually not that terrible. Um, So anyway, just some very quick and dirty image editing tools for doing stuff inside. Um, well, gosh, it does almost everything, really. Like when you uh, go to make a new project, it's pretty cool. Check out all this stuff. It's like got all the stuff spec and dimensions for Facebook posts and Instagram stories and all the things that we do the most these days. Built this... Uh, slider Instagram slider in here okay moving on otter who hears you yep can I ask one question about Canva before you move on yeah hold on just a sec I want to see who's talking okay. is that Sam yeah go for it um, so I just, I've been working on doing all of my rebranding in Canva. So I have everything that you just did lined mm -hmm. up, mm -hmm. but what you just pulled down with like aligning it with other social media, did you upload that in there or is that a drop down tool that I've missed? You mean when I showed you these things? Yeah. Well, I think you must've just missed it. This is what comes up when I create a new design. And these are just the okay. ones, meaning they may come up because I've already started to search for them. But if you go like Insta, look at all this. Or if you go Facebook. Okay. Facebook, I, have, I need to connect with all that. Thank you. For... Yeah, no problem. I mean, I'm actually like, it... look at this. All these WhatsApp things. That's crazy. It's if crazy. anyone needs help with like branding and putting all of your branding stuff in, I'm I'm happy to give you some tips on that. It's oh, super easy. Okay. I might need some help with that. Yeah. yeah I feel I've like been, I just I'm, barely started doing it. 
I did all the templating through it, which is really, really cool, but I haven't connected with the AI part of it. So thanks for showing us that. What do you mean the templating part? Like what I'm showing you right here? No, so like templating for my entire business, like the way I communicate with my clients or other people, like I branded all of my templates and I just plug in the client's name or the information that they need for that. So all the colors and that. fonts, yeah. Yeah, I want that. You can see I'm just getting started here. I don't got a lot of this stuff loaded up, but, um, and yet still I find it very powerful. Okay, I am adding to my to-do. This is exactly how I use my Notion. Um, I need to talk to Sam about Canva uh, branding workshop. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. You're welcome. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Now let's go back to where before. <laughs> Who here is using Otter already? Uh, yeah, Kevin. Yeah, I noticed Gabby's using it. Her her uh, Otter is in here. <laughs> um, I love it. I use it in a couple different ways. I have it listened into my meetings and stuff, but I um like Gabby's is doing here. Some people find it a little bit aggressive because um, Gabby had a doctor's appointment today, and so she didn't intend to come to this meeting, and she's not here, but her uh, otter came anyway. And what it does is it essentially sends an AI bot to your Google Calendar meeting, like we all have here today, and it listens to the call, and it makes transcriptions and action items and all that stuff automatically, populates your Google Calendar with it. Um, it's quite incredible. And uh, it's about 25 bucks a month. Um, they give you like 30 minutes, you know, for free, which is about enough to get yourself completely hooked. And, um, and then they charge you. Um, and I don't think I need to show it off. A few people are already using it. And uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Just oh, the, the one thing I have to say is I don't just use it for meetings and recording those and sending my bot to meetings, but I also use it for, um, well, I, I used to at the beginning of my AI journey. And so I'm suggesting it to you guys. I used it for transcribing my um, voice notes to myself that I was making, but now my audio transcriber on my Google Pixel 4, 6 has transcription built in. Um, so find the, the most important principle here would be find a way to record your own voice and to transcribe it so you can feed it into AI and also find a way to record your meetings um, for the same purpose. And I suggest Otter. Um, so the next one is Discord. I'm sorry, what'd you say? Sorry about the background noise today, guys. Um, okay, back to Discord. So again, Discord is not a AI tool per se, but um, this is where so many of the AI tools have been born and live. And so one, it's a great place to connect with the AI tools. If you're gonna use a lot of them, you're gonna need to be a part of some AI communities and a lot of those happen on Discord. And um, my community is here on Discord. I think I invited you all, but let's just double check that we've done that by... Where are we in Zoom? Here's the chat. Um, I dropped the link to the Discord that I run in the chat. Discord can be a little bit confusing at first. I think of it as um, Slack for the rest of us or something like that. It's, it's team-based collaboration and chatting software where you can share files, do chat rooms and whatever. But like I said, the whole AI community lives there. So for instance, mid journey is a tool we've all talked a lot about. And this is the mid journey um, discord. And uh, when you first get started in mid journey, you can start. Oh, where's the newbie channels? Here's the newbie channels. You can get your start in the newbie channels here. However, I think I told you guys me not wanting to do that. I started my own Discord and I installed the Midjourney bot on it, which is what you guys are looking at here. This is just Midjourney on my Discord server. And I installed the some other bots here as well. So that's another nice part about it is like 
instead of you having to maintain a Discord server, maintain all different bots, if you just want to use them and have access to them in a private space, you can either make your own private space or, or join one like this. Um, and I like I installed the Insight face swap bot here so I can do some face swapping. Did I show you guys that last week? Face swapping? No, you didn't. Okay. Might be interesting. This won't work. Again? So I'm just going to type in the function describe and say image and drop that image in there. While it's thinking about what it's describing, I'm also going to type in another command, which is called save ID. You, you can't know this off the top of your head or anything. I'm just showing you my tips and tricks. ID name, I'll say KK. Or maybe I've used that one before, so maybe I'll just type Christopher. And there's the thing we're going to swap with. So we're doing two things concurrently. One, we uploaded this picture, and we had it describe what it thinks it sees. And so this is its description. And I'm just going to run all those permutations through mid-journey. While we were waiting for that, we also loaded up my picture into insight face swap and we can see that that worked right here id name christopher created so what's happening mid journey is running a bunch of permutations based on prompts that it wrote based on looking at that picture of me once they're generated we're going to find one that we like or that resembles me or that's funny or something like that and we're going to swap my face back onto it <laughs> I found this is the best way to do face swaps and deep fakes of this nature because you start with a picture of the subject, i.e. yourself, and then you do some permutations, some creativity on top of that, and then you swap self back onto the original one to begin with. It's kind of a, a clever way of doing it. Has anyone here ever done any of this kind of stuff? No. No. Let's just do one of these hands, gentlemen. Oh, they say never do live demos, right? Because they never work. Mm -hmm. Let's see if it works. Once you've installed the face swap bopper on your bot on your mid journey, it comes up right here, and all the work happens behind the scenes. Let's see. Oops, I might have messed it up. Oh, there you go. There's it's. So there's the old uh, the before. <clears throat> This is the one it says is me. <laughs> pretty, pretty damn good, I would say. All right, well, we'll, we'll move on. I like doing other people too, but it could be quite the rabbit hole. <laughs> So this is kind of interesting. I'd say it did look like me and it's doing a pretty good job, but now it's changed. You know, the image that it's working with is showing the one side of my face. Look how, I mean, it swapped it all the way to the other side of the face. Definitely got my nose ridge, right? And my silver patches. <laughs> Incredible. All right. Custom GPTs. I don't know how many of you guys are, if you're not signed up for the paid version, I highly suggest it. This is the section where people can write custom GPTs. The ones that I've used recently are supposed to pop up right here and I just tested it this morning. But anyway, um, there are some amazing uh, different, the, the Canva one, Sam, is one of the best ones. Um, Interesting. Okay. So we went out and grabbed some logo templates inside Canva. 
um, that it thinks are applicable for the project that it that we just described to it. And now we can just click right over and go straight into Canva. Boom. You like your new logo, Sam? It's pretty cool. We might need to edit the colors, but I think it's a good start. <laughs> How is that for seven seconds of work? I love it. I love it. <laughs> Let me find my window again. Um, well, there you go. We like that one better. It actually gave us, you know, what, five ideas that are all completely editable right away inside Canva. That's so crazy. It's just amazing. Amazing. All right. That was actually surprising that it was that that awesome. But I love that one. Canva is a great one. There's another one that I've been liking. It's this Instagram carousel creator, and I've been getting my EA to use it. There's also one that um does like image um. So these are custom implementations of ChatGPT4 that people have written. Um, oops. I'm just going to hit refresh because I might have confused it. Oh, it was Instagram one next. You can get a relative. I, I, I determine how quote unquote good they are by how many people are using them. I don't know what we're going to see here, but it's probably going to act like a complete Instagram social media consultant and give us some captions and titles, and hashtags, and descriptions and stuff. Oh, it's giving us the whole strategy and everything. Posting tips. Oh, there's my GPTs. It's thinking quite slow, and I'm a little bit impatient for it today, so you guys get the drift. Um, I just wanted to show you while we're here. I've built a custom GPT for myself. It's a little heavy-handed, but in terms of it talking like a pirate, <laughs> but um, uh, write a text message saying happy birthday to my mom. Terrible use today. I don't know why it came out. <laughs> And actually, because I, I, of I, when I asked it, it, it gave me a weird answer. Let me try a different one. <laughs> Write um, a, a short bio of me. Ahoy, digital wanderer. You've embarked upon a quest to forge an identity in the boundless expanse of the cyber seas. I think I was telling it I was a pirate captain or something like that. But anyway, I've writ written a writing bot that's pretty good, and I've put some time into it. I, I've actually, when I say it's pretty good, I have to use it in a two-step process. I have it write something for me, and then I'm like, tone it down a little bit. And then it gets it perfect on the second try when I'm like, tone it down a little bit. Um, and I made one for my business as well. This isn't so much for writing, but it's for strategy. What conferences should I go to this year? So this is like the custom instructions that you guys might be familiar with inside ChatGPT, but it's taken to the next level. It, um, it, it's not just custom instructions, but a whole custom little GPT app trained on only the things that you train it on, stuff like that. So it knows me and my business. So it's just gonna tell me specifically what things I should go do. And it's right, I am going to South by on Thursday. So Chris, um... 
So what have you trained it with? Or how did you go about, like, can you talk a little bit about the training process? Yeah, I mean, you can train it on whatever you want, but I'll show you my stuff, um, I think. Just dealing with the... Uh... So Chris, all of this exists inside chat GPT, right? Inside the paid version. Inside the paid version, okay. Yeah. With, this is just one of the many reasons why I think you should pay for it. Um, it's amazing at writing code, crunching numbers, analyzing fucking 30 PDFs at the same time and finding common themes. All the really powerful beefy stuff comes in the paid version, um, including these custom GPTs. Kevin, um, what I did was, and you might not be able to see it here, I fed, I, I gathered all the writings of my blog I could find into a document. And then I used ChatGPT to write a, a writing style guide. And then I made transcripts from my YouTube videos and podcasts. And I had it make me a um, worldview and perspectives document. And then I think I fed those into here. So um, this is the persona overview with tone and voice. Here it is. This is why confidence swashbuckler. Let's get that up there. Adventures, lexicon. So anyway, I put it, put it in here. I allowed it to swear. I should tell it to swear more. It's not doing a very good job of it yet. <laughs> and then this is where we get from the um, down into the vision and voice part. And then, you know, you can write your own conversation starters here. The conversation starters are what usually appear at the bottom. And then here you can, if I wouldn't have written the writing guide and the style guide first and then brought those things in, I would, I could upload the files directly here. So I could upload 50 PDFs and that could be the only data that it has to draw from. If that answers your question, Kevin, is you, you would have documents here. So in, is there like, cause there's also a word limit on in a, like when you drop something into chat GPT, like there's a word limit. So is this like, you can act, you can actually just upload like all your documents and just be like, go through this. Yeah. And that's also the way to get around the word limit inside chat GPT in general. Mm -hmm. It's anytime you're having a problem with word limit, just write that shit to a text file and upload the text file to your um, chat window, just like this oh. one. And that comes in the paid version as well. Cool. Yeah, that's exactly how I do it. Let me just go back. Yeah, just, you know, once you have the paid version, you get this little bad boy and you can attach documents. And I do it all the time. Read these last 25 email newsletters that this company sent and pick me out the themes that are reoccurring and stuff like that, you know. Or my buddy Johnny, who that native guy you met the other night, he was saying, I have this friend, Johnny, he works for the Squamish Nation and Indigenous First Nations here as a cultural advisor. He's a real young guy. And uh, he says, you know, his job is to go through these RFPs that developers send him and to um, uh, find the part where they're asking him for his cultural uh, perspective and give them advice. And he says he usually had to read those things for two days to find the paragraph. And by that time, he was already over budget on the project and didn't even have time to come up with any sound advice or whatever so uh now he just, just points gpt at now you can spend two days writing a uh, cultural advice for these projects instead of looking for the freaking paragraph in the middle so that was pretty cool okay back to notion another tool i wanted to show you guys is oh i'm not sure how much you guys will use this but some people really like it this is poe over here and what Poe does is it allows you access to a bunch of different um, models, language models. So like Google has an open source LLM, Facebook has an open source LLM. This is Anthropics Cloud that is the best. Of all the tools for doing creative writing and prose, Cloud is the best, even the so this is Claude 1, the older model, and this is the newer model. Poe used to give you access to the newer model to upload for free, but now you can see here it says subscriber access only. But even this one, Claude Instant 100K, I mean, one, 100K is a huge token window. That's a lot of stuff you can cut and paste into that thing. Um, and it writes really good.
It also hallucinates more than some of the other ones when you're asking it to do things that aren't just writing. But look how fast it, it went to. And here is what I was talking about the hallucinations. It says on CEO of Acme Innovation Corp. <laughs> Too funny. Anyway, one of my favorite things when I'm trying to wrap my head around these different tools is to run similar prompts through different things. So I can just like, you know, um, grab that prompt that I had just pasted in there, write a prompt, came up with a pretty reasonable answer, and then I can go to the next one down, test the same thing in a different tool. So that was Claude's version of it. And that was, and then it also has a bunch of other weird bots and I don't always use these, but they're pretty cool. Make me a playlist for um, chill afternoon. Work vibes. Hmm, well, I don't know why it failed, but. I used to use that where, one. Where would it make that playlist from, Chris? Or is it is it just general knowledge? Or from Spotify. It... From Spotify, okay. Yeah, it would go look at other ones, maybe called Chill, Afternoon Vibes, and stuff like that, and find one that, that suited me. Okay. This one writes mid-journey prompts for you. So I said, write me a prompt for a solar punk makerspace. It writes this one. Let's just grab the whole thing and see what it has to say. While it's off crunching on that, I just want to go back and bang on that one a little bit more. Uh, make it shorter and animated. Yeah, so that works. You can talk back and forth with it. And let's say, um, now, you know, now write three even shorter variants. Bam, bam, bam. So when I'm when I'm brainstorming and image kind of visioning, just trying to get as many ideas out of me as possible to go back and look at later and see where they've taken me, this is one way that I do it. Because you can literally just cut and paste them in even when they got the slash in there. And then the way I like to do it, just because I'm showing you my workflow, I like to go back and look at the images that Midjourney made me on my actual profile instead of in the Discord where I generated them. So I'm logging into that now. So there's the uh, beardos that we created earlier. And then these blank spots are it running those other permutations that I was asking for earlier, solar punk makerspace. They're all kind of coming into existence right here. That one's awesome. I want to work there. So it's still thinking, but you can see it's, it's doing all right. I want them to look more futuristic. Let's say, um, great, but I want them to look like film stills from the year 2100. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but you can see, you can talk to it very conversationally, like you're talking to friends. Oops, I imagine that one twice. Okay, we'll double back on that in a minute. I know that was a whirlwind, but I would just say Poe is a cool AI experimentation lab where you can just 
get access to a whole bunch of different things and just, you know, in the spirit of developing an AI mindset, um, this is a way to get to know the different types of things you can do. Like, this is awesome. I didn't even know this was here. Stable diffusion is a third type of image creation tool that I've never really had access to because I don't, you know, you're supposed to have to run it locally on your, um, on your machine. This is a super fast implementation by a company called Grok of the Llama model. Super fast. I'm having fun now, so I could do this all day, but I do want to keep going. Let's see if there's hmm. anything else. Anyway, these are all different AIs that you can access through this one interface. I call this kind of like the trillium of AIs, like back when we all were on seven different instant messaging platforms and then to you know talk to our friends, we had to download the, the one that brought them all together. Where am I going? Notion. Oh, great, I love this one. Ideogram. This is the AI that I use to generate um, logo concepts and text-based things. It is better than all the other tools at text. And this is my little workspace here. You can see I've generated some future-proof creatives logos. I'm throwing a party on the last day of South by Southwest or like when the geeks leave and the musicians come in called the hello goodbye party and so I was doing like logos and graphics in here and so these are like denim for Austin but Sakura leaves like Japanese style cherry blossoms for spring and uh, here's my prompts but this one is really good I'll make a logo for Sam Oaks and then you can see it limits you a little bit on the time, so it can't be quite as snappy as I like to be. Um, but a logo reads Sam Oaks. And down here, I'm going to choose a couple of these modifiers. I'm going to make it a typographic poster. So I showed you one way to generate uh, logo concepts inside the Canva custom GPT. This is another way to generate logo concepts. Sam, here's your logos. <laughs> and this you. Was, you know, this is with nothing. But let's keep going a little bit. Let's go. Um, <clears throat> a uh, word mark for graphic designer can you click on 3d render yeah you got it on that first okay and this was the we had run two gen generations of it so this was a different one this was the uh this was the one with where we specified topography and poster You can see it's getting a little creative down here. The nice part about the Canva one, though, is you can just click on them, you open the Canva, and they're editable text already. That's pretty powerful. Whereas these ones, you better like what you get, or you better be able to edit it in Photoshop. But I want to modify this one again and try it, try it one more time. Let's go. We'll move on after this. But I got pretty far um, in a lot of the projects I've been working on with this tool. Just really helps me make a lot of um, concepts really quickly. Just trying to use uh, optical illusions inside my Vancouver AI meetup logo. So this is some of the explorations I was going down. 
And I think I ended up with this one. This is, I ended up going in this direction. Cool. But, you know, I'm like a sort of designer. I can design. I know the process for doing all these things, but I just could never have gotten this far down the road generating so many different ideas so quickly. I've really come to love it. Chris, ju just in terms of what you can or can't do with, with these concepts in the real world, uh, are there any limitations on what you can do here? So if I wanted to generate a logo for myself or one of my clients, uh, I mean, if I, if I develop something as you've just done and I go, right, that's it, that's super cool, I want to use that. Is there any reason why not? Are there any legal constraints or issues? I would say that the only legal constraint that I'm familiar with is that you would have a hard time protecting it unless you um, brought it into Canva or something like that. And um, modified it slightly like that. Because right. now, okay. now the work of the human hand is involved. You know, just okay. even that small change right there. Yeah. Is enough to protect it legally uh, at, with with creators or makers' rights. Whereas yeah. we're not sure yet if your prompts are protected. Like if you write a prompt and I steal your prompt, can I do that? Or is that like writing poetry and me stealing your poetry? We were not sure. And then um, okay, it seems like well, I shouldn't say it seems like. I just I can't quote the cases, but I heard recently of a couple cases that were. The, the legal principle that was brought to bear in the judgment that they could not protect a certain work was that it had not been modified at all by a human, whereas other works he had just drawn a pixel, single pixel line through it that wasn't even perceptible until you opened it in Photoshop, but that was enough for it to be protectable. Right, okay, okay, yeah. got it. The only other thing I would say, I guess, and like, you know, sometimes when I say these things, it instills the wrong impression in people, but it's because this is not a reason to not do it, but uh, other people, can, you know, can see what you're doing. Right. Let me just show you what I mean specifically. Yeah. So, like, this is a whole bunch of signs that, have, that are trending on the site that other people have made, and their prompts are here. So, sometimes when I'm feeling creatively jammed up, I'll go like this, and I'll go like this, and I'll go up here, and I'll say logo with text, Sam Oaks, <laughs> with lavender flower, and blah, 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 and then see what happens. So that's all I would say is like, you know, let's say you did have a novel idea, and let's say your novel idea was world-changingly unique and awesome. Uh, by putting it up in here, you're starting to reveal it to the world, possibly. Okay. Okay. So I don't think I think okay. I just described a situation that it, for most people will never exist, <laughs> but um, you know, nonetheless. Yeah. Uh, that's okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's pretty cool. Okay. You just find something you like. I'm gonna make Kevin one now too, because I'm I'm on a roll. Where does it say good morning? Oh, there. All right. <laughs> um, sorry about the background noise, guys. Okay, 11 laps. Fortunately, I have a hard stop in five. Oops. Um, this is a tool I pay for. I don't pay a lot for it. I think I pay 20 or 30 bucks on it. And it is a voice cloning laboratory. Um, these here on the right are voice clones that I have made recently. You record your voice into it. I chose to read David Attenborough's scripts. And I, I tried a few different versions of it. You can see here's the KK Quickie test. Here was a one that I didn't clean up before I did it, so it's not referring to dirty dirtiness, it's just uh, fuzzy and scratchy. And then this is the one that I fine-tuned that was the best, and I spent the most time kind of 
and then you can use those to generate new things. So we're going to run that one in the background. I'll show you a couple things. Here. Thanks so much, everybody, for coming to these workshops. I love sharing this stuff with peeps. So that's you know with no no editing, but we can make it even better. But um, that so I I can generate whole text scripts in GPT and have it um play. and then I can do the same in different languages. 我的名字是 Chris Crook says 一个突破界限的创意探索者，一个直觉技术地狱者，一个坚韧的。And I use those. I'm really taking you guys on a whirlwind now. I use those inside of this tool called HeyGen, which I'm going to show you here, to make these、um, deep fakes, introducing myself to different language groups of the world. हमारे मोहतरम हाथिजा मोजिज मेहमान और मेरे प्यारे तुलबा को मेरा नाम आपका नाम है और मैं आज आप सो द ऑडियो देयर इज कमिंग आउट ऑफ द इलेवन लैब्स टू ओवर दैट आई जस्ट शोड यू मैं एस्ट्रिन वेंकुर की रंगीन कम्युनिटी से आर अरबी और हिंदी एंड देन आई डू द वीडियो पार्ट इन दिस अदर टूल कॉल्ड हे जेन सो व्हाट यू आर लुकिंग एट हियर अक्रॉस द टॉप रो इज आई हैव Made four different video avatars. Three of these free ones here, and this one that's more fine-tuned. And so again, I can come in here, and we can make a new video.、Uh, Um, and submit. This one might take another minute there. So it's loading up the voices from Eleven Labs because I put my Eleven Lab voice clone into the HeyGen model here. And it's going to go off and run that for me. Bear with me just a sec, guys. I have to move towards a power outlet. Do we have any questions right here? We we have about three minutes left. <laughs> so with with this with this combination of these two、um, assets,、uh, Chris, you could make videos in multiple languages, right, at one、yeah. time.、Mm -hmm. So I could create fifteen different language versions of a particular script、um, with video. Yeah,、uh, I could do that in in. Twenty-four hours or twenty-four minutes or some such. Yeah, totally. Let me just show you this one that I made, and maybe you guys have seen it. It's pretty. It's pretty cool. This was this was the video I trained myself on. <clears throat> Oops. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. We're almost there. Just a sec. Right. Oh shit. Hey everyone, welcome back to the bot. So first of all, that's not me. It's not my video and not my voice. But I do a long introduction and essentially tell people what they're about to see. And then right here. This is pretty much what you Welcome just described. Welcome to Chris Krug's global digital tribe, bridging worlds through language and creative technology. مرحبا بكم في القبيلة الرامية العالمية لكريس كروج، جسر العوالم من خلال اللغة والتكنولوجيا الإبداعية. كوري سكروج شان شين نغورو بارود زيتارو تراي بوه يوكوسو. يان يو تكوريتي وتكون روزي وتون زتشي جي وتسناغو. بهي قبيلة ديجيتال جهاني كريس كروج فوش أمدي. दुनिया हराए 
So you can see in that one, I use different video clips to show the diversity that it can do in different spots. And then I use seven different languages and I strung them all together. I essentially made eight different videos and then cut and pasted them together. Wow. Yeah. But wow. it took me like an afternoon <laughs> with, no, with no skills. As, a, as opposed to about eight weeks, which. Uh... <laughs> yeah, or, I mean, or, or, or eight Beijing. years, right? How can you yeah, learn yeah, a Beijing crazy. accent? You know, how do you learn a Beijing accent? <laughs> <laughs> okay. crazy yeah. crazy yeah truly. truly um it's two and i have to have to run but i just want to show you guys this you're showing them my to-do list no and you're not even supposed to be here <laughs> um we got you know rut there somehow. Oh, I made it through a big part of the list. Okay, Descript is pretty cool. For those of you who thought maybe I want to start a podcast or a video blog, um, Descript is going to be your best friend. Um, this is the lowest hanging fruit for doing text-based audio and video editing. I'll show you what I mean. Um, this will work. I think this is going to work. Shoot. Okay. Well, what I want to show you, I might not be able to, because it has to download a several gig file, but essentially this is a text transcript of this video that's loading up right here. Yeah. And when I, oh, I can't hear it. Anyway, if I highlight this text and delete it, it, deletes it from the audio and video. It, it does the oh. action. It does an AI audio video edit based on text. Like, yeah, and it can auto detect ums and ahs and all that stuff and scrub them. I see, I already scrubbed this one. I wish I would have, I should get to spend more time together. But it's almost so simple that it's okay that I can't show you. Just say back to projects. I just need one. Sorry, guys. I'm not actually going to get to demo that one because of the long file download. For those of you who aren't paying for mid journey and you want to start doing some image making, Google Microsoft image maker. You need to have a Microsoft account and then you end up at this Copilot designer. So this is free. It uses Dolly 3. And it's inside Microsoft and it's pretty awesome. It's cool. creating that now. This is my things I have done in the past over here. <laughs> this is at another another demo one day. But then if you don't have a Microsoft account, you can still do free ones at just Bing. Put on Copilot, and this is the. I'm actually logged in, so it won't show you, but um, this is just another version of it right here. This is access to Chat GPT four for free and Dolly three for free, but through Microsoft's Bing or Copilot. Because <laughs> things like more balanced, more precise, how we're making art. We showed you Augie with Jeremy last week. Let's go in a runway, and then I can actually say we ripped you the whole list. Chris, I also can show video from the script. Oh, great. Cool. You can probably show um, some runways, too. Bro.
Runway allows you to take stills and add AI video to them. Or create AI videos from them, I guess is probably a better way to say it. Wow. Oh no, I'm logged into the wrong account. <laughs> oh man, let's just see here. We'll make a project anyway. Oh, here's one. FaceTime video. Oh. That was really weird. It's glitching on me, Robert. You want to take a... Um... It would be failing. Actually, I'm not going to show this now. We're over time, and I just got two error messages. But, Robert, I wanted to give you a chance to show. If you give me, yeah, if you give me control, I can show the audio real quick. Okay, I think you should be able to now. Yep. So as Chris was saying, um, the script allows you to, you, if you have audio and podcast, you can make some audiograms, you can do, you can take written text and do it. Um, what I did is I created a series of essays called Minds and Machines. And one of the essays I created was this, talking to myself, listening with AI. Uh, and I originally posted it on LinkedIn, um, and I decided I wanted to add, you know, I know some people want to listen to it. So I took it into the script, just took this text, and then they had this ability to create an audiogram, which is a visualizer for the audio. I took the text, added a voice to it, and then was able to create this. I've always enjoyed the creative process of brainstorming, letting ideas bounce around making loose associations, and seeing where my thoughts would wander. You're amazing, them. Robert. I'd talk to others or just to myself and fill notebooks and sticky notes with... So I knew that not everyone would listen, like would take the time to kind of read my thoughts about this, but I knew I could take those and add a voice to it and let someone listen to it for two minutes. Uh, and because they create these really nice audiograms, that give you something to kind of look at if you wanted to look at it. Um, I was able to do that. And this, to be honest, took me no more than 20 minutes to actually create. And that means even I customized this viewer to actually look more like the site that I was building out um, to get more kind of brand continuity. So I just wanted this stuff to look like it was all part of a family. I think, Chris, didn't I tell you, I think all of this all in took me probably four hours of writing. I used AI to help me write my essays. I, used... I mean, it's so cool because I think of it in context of like what Kevin Broom was showing last week and stuff. Like Ke Kevin could take the Gucci images he's made and he could take the forest charter that already exists. And he could copy and paste that into 11 labs and have it be read by Samuel L. Jackson and then, like, you know, mash up his photos with uh, Samuel L. Jackson's voice. Yeah. And be, yeah, and that's the is kind scene. of an aesthetic that I just kind of, you know, these images are mid journey. I found a style I was really interested to, made some tiling of a background so it looked like this, and then just kind of put all the things together. Awesome, man. Wow. Well, Glad you were able to join us. Guys, that concludes this. I have to run. 
Uh, thank you, Chris. I'd be very interested in staying in touch with everyone. If people want to connect on uh, LinkedIn or some such. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to help me make a cohort of a group on LinkedIn and we're going to launch it with you guys. That That's really great. That's really great. And I, I'm also kicking around the concept of putting on a creative conference around the environment in New York at some point in the next 18 months or so, uh, which would be an immersive experience around uh, how creatives can help save the environment. So if anyone's conceptually interested, it might even call on Sam's interior design skills. But uh, just uh, let me know. But Chris, thank you so much. And delightful to hear the stories and meet everyone. And Kevin, amazing. Last week blew my mind. Thank you. Hey, Lee, my favorite thing about the internet and this stuff is really the serendipity of it all. I just dropped a link to you on the chat. It's a festival okay. I'm organizing about the future of art, technology, and alternative living, i.e. Right. responses to climate change and other things like that. And this is a concept at the moment, but it's a concept that I've begun to advance and I built the site and the identity and I'm trying to get some funding around it. So we'd love That's to hear cool. what you're up to yeah. and show you and like compare notes and stuff. And I don't want to do this by myself. <laughs> no, 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 Let, let's definitely connect on that. That's very interesting. And uh, thank you again. And very nice to meet Robert. Uh, very nice to meet you guys, really, honestly, great pleasure. Thanks guys, I really appreciate it. I'll talk to you all soon. See on the group that we make. Okay. Cheers. Bye. Bye, guys.